Hey everybody, Darren Burrows here. Today I wanna to walk you through why I'm considering selling my portfolio of properties in Red Deer, Alberta. As a real estate investor, it's really important that we analyze our portfolio on a regular basis to make sure that our portfolio is performing the way that we want it to. If there's a certain rate of return that you're expecting on your portfolio, you have to analyze that portfolio to make sure that those targets are being hit. And sometimes when you look at the numbers in detail, you may realize that you have underperforming assets. And at that point, you wanna make the decision on whether you wanna sell those properties or whether you wanna restructure that portfolio somehow so that you can either gain more income or reduce your expenses. Up until a few years ago, my thought process was you never sell anything in your real estate portfolio. Real estate investing is a long-term game, which is true. But if we have properties in our portfolio that are underperforming, we have to look at not only the rate of return that they're earning, but what's the opportunity cost of that money being deployed elsewhere. You may incur significant costs of selling things off in your portfolio, and in some cases, you might even be selling for less than what you paid for that property. But if you can take that money and deploy it elsewhere, that's a good utilization of your funds. So I'm gonna walk you through an analysis of my five properties in Red Deer, Alberta, and we're gonna do a little bit of analysis on that portfolio, and you can help me decide whether you think I should sell that portfolio or whether I should restructure it and keep it for the long term. Before we get into that, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let's get into it. I think this goes without saying, but before you make any decisions on your real estate portfolio, you have to analyze that portfolio and know exactly where you're at. And the more honest you can be when you're looking at your portfolio, the better off you'll be. You can always make excuses on why maybe the last year or two years has been a bad year, but try not to let that creep in. Really just focus on the numbers and try to take the emotional elements out of those decisions. Because if there's one thing I know about real estate investing is that the numbers don't lie. You also have to make sure you're comparing apples to apples. And what I mean by that is, no matter whether the property's in your portfolio or it's something that you're looking to acquire, you have to analyze it exactly the same. For instance, if you're managing your own rental properties, but you don't include property management in your numbers, that's gonna skew your numbers. If you're unsure of how to run numbers on a rental property, I'll link a video right here that'll break down how I analyze my rental properties. And if you're looking for a software to analyze properties, I'll leave a link in the description below for Deal Check, which I find is very robust in being able to analyze your numbers. The next thing you wanna look at when you're analyzing your portfolio is you have to look at what your real estate investing goals are. If you're looking for cash flow right now, you may have a very different strategy or keep properties in your portfolio versus if you're looking to build equity over time. And I know this is gonna sound crazy, but some of you might actually be looking to lose money on your rental properties so that you can offset some of your income if you're a high net worth individual. So make sure that you're taking into account your goals as well as your numbers when you're analyzing your properties. There are two metrics that I like to use when I'm looking at my real estate portfolio and really any other investment opportunity. The first one is cash on cash return. And the second one is overall return on investment. Cash on cash return is pretty straightforward to calculate. We just take the amount of cash that we have invested in something and we try to see how much that generates every single year in terms of cash back in our pocket. So for easy numbers, if I have $100,000 invested in a property and that property pays me $10,000 in positive cash flow every single year, that's a 10% cash on cash return. If you're really interested in building cash flow for right now, you should be focusing in on what is the cash on cash return of that investment. If building equity over time is really more of your focus, then you can start to shift your perspective to what's the overall return on investment. In the overall return on investment, we're gonna calculate all the ways that we can make money on that property or on that asset. For instance, if I'm looking at a rental property, I would not only look at the cash flow, but I'd also look at the mortgage pay down, the market appreciation, and what I've been able to do with forced appreciation. And if you're not familiar with what forced appreciation is, that's essentially the work that we do to increase the value of that property. And most times we do that through renovation. So if I did a renovation to a property for let's say $100,000 and that increased the value of that property by $150,000, that additional $50,000 is forced appreciation because we did that renovation to the property. So once you've had a chance to analyze your portfolio, look at your goals, and decide on the metrics that you wanna to use to build your wealth over time, now you can start to make decisions on what you wanna do with your actual properties. So with that in mind, let's take a look at my five properties in Red Deer, Alberta, and start to do some analysis on that portfolio using actual numbers. Just for context, let me give you a little background information on these five properties in this portfolio. These five properties are all legal up and down duplexes. Well, technically they're single family dwellings with secondary suites, but what I'm getting at is that each property has two revenue streams. The properties are nicely renovated, they're in a good area of town, and we have a really good tenant profile in these properties. 
Each of the suites has a separate electrical meter, so the tenants pay their own electricity, and each of the suites has a separate heating system, so the tenants also control the heat and cooling inside of their own unit. And I've also got a great property manager that manages these five properties for me because I don't live in Alberta and I can't manage those properties from a distance. So you may be asking yourself, well then why would I wanna sell these five properties inside of the portfolio based on the list of items that I just laid out? But as I mentioned earlier, it's really all about the numbers. So when we analyze the numbers, that's gonna really tell us what's going on with these five properties. For simplicity, I've used the values of all five properties combined and I've rounded the numbers up or down a little bit to just make sure we're dealing with nice even numbers. So the combined purchase price of these five properties in Alberta was $1.435 million. And if you're shopping in Toronto, that would buy you one property. The initial investment on these five properties, which includes the down payment, the closing costs, and the renovations needed, was around $385,000. The current mortgages on these five properties adds up to about $1.08 million. And the current value of this portfolio sits at around $1.625 million, which leaves us around $545,000 in equity. That's the difference between what's owed on the mortgages and what the value of those properties is currently. The current annual positive cash flow on this portfolio is around $18,000. Each year, the principal on these mortgages are paid down approximately $32,000. The market appreciation, which is the value that these properties climb on a year over year basis in Red Deer, Alberta right now is $0. And that may sound shocking to many of you. And this is a prime example of why we want to invest for cash flow when it comes to rental properties versus speculating on whether the market is going to go up or not. And the last of our four categories is forced appreciation. Again, that's the value that we can increase the property by doing a renovation. But because these properties are all renovated already, we don't have any forced appreciation. So our total yearly profit on these five properties in Alberta is $50,000 a year between cash flow and mortgage pay down. So if we take our $50,000 that we make on a yearly basis and we divide that by the $385,000 that we have invested in these five properties, that gives us an annual rate of return of 13% on a year over year basis. 13% annual return is not a bad investment, but we also have to look at our opportunity costs, which I mentioned earlier. What about that money that's sitting there in equity that we aren't really doing anything with? So in order to calculate that return, we have to take the money that we're earning on a yearly basis and divide it by the equity. So in our situation, we're taking the $50,000 and we're dividing that by the $545,000 that's sitting there in equity. And when we look at those numbers, we end up with a 9.2% return on an annual basis. And again, 9.2% annual return is not a bad return. But is it exactly what you hope to earn on your real estate portfolio? If you hope to earn 15 or 20 or 25% return on your investment and you're only making a 9.2% return, well then you have to make some decisions on whether you wanna move forward with those properties in that portfolio. Now if you land on a decision that you wanna sell your properties, you have to consider some other factors as well. When you're considering selling any property, you'll have to consider realtor fees, breaking the mortgage or paying a mortgage penalty, and of course the dreaded capital gains tax. So now I'd love to hear from you. I'd like to hear in the comments section below whether you think I should sell this portfolio of properties or hold it for the long term. If I do decide to hold these properties, I can use this analysis to look at how I can optimize this portfolio. As I mentioned earlier, I've got $545,000 in equity sitting in this portfolio. So even though I can't tap that money because of my debt service ratios, I can borrow against that portfolio for future investments. I could also look at the possibility of grouping these five mortgages with one lender. Currently, they're with two different lenders, but I could blend them all together and get a better rate and maybe have better options in terms of being able to borrow against those five properties. And I promise that I will do another video on commercializing your residential portfolio when it comes to financing options. In the meantime, I want to encourage you to do this exercise every single year, whether you own one property or whether you own 400 properties. It's a really good opportunity to check in on an annual basis and see how your portfolio is performing. Just because real estate investing is a long-term game doesn't mean we invest in real estate and then we just forget about everything. We have to check in on our portfolio on a regular basis and make adjustments as necessary. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did do me a favor hit the like button below to satisfy the YouTube algorithm and help put this video in front of the right audience you can also subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell and feel free to leave comments and questions below for me you can also follow me on Facebook Instagram or check out my website at darrenvoros.com with that I'll say thank you guys so much for watching I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey and I look forward to hearing your success stories very soon